I'm Jane Harris. Um, I'm a counsellor. I work with people who are looking for therapy to address difficult issues. I'm also a mother who's lost a son. My son died in 2011. Um, and I've also experienced the death of my father and mother. And I became involved in People in Partnership because I really felt that there was a terrible silence around the subject of death and bereavement and grief. And I felt very uncomfortable with that. And I felt that the work that Dying Matters and the People in Partnership um, were doing was really important, as important as peer-to-peer -peer support, which is also very helpful for bereaved people. So I became involved quite some years ago um, and have used film and shown films to the group to illustrate people's stories and how sharing stories helps change attitudes and normalise what many people would call abnormal experiences like untimely death, the death of your child. Um, I suppose what I've learned is that the death of a parent is in the right order of things, whereas the death of a child isn't. However, I think that there's an awful lot of room for improvement in terms of attitudes and approaches to people um, at the end of their lives. And, and I'm really in awe of the work that the People in Partnership does. We need to work with professionals to get those voices heard that have had experiences um, and who understand what's important at these very difficult and vulnerable chapters in their lives. It's really important to share our experiences and our stories, and, and that's something that we do um, through making films. I'm a filmmaker, but I'm also interested in networking and learning from other people. Um, but sharing stories helps, and I think that what I've discovered is that a lot of professionals, who are the most amazing professionals in the world, don't necessarily know how to talk about difficult subjects like death in a way that they feel comfortable with. And I think that's a really tricky area. But fear, I suppose, is one of the obstacles that can get in the way. And I think that if we can overcome our fear of talking about death and loss, we're halfway there. Because the problem is, people want to fix things. Everybody wants to make things better. And the trouble with death and end of life is you can't change it, but you can improve what happens. and. I just think that people with personal experience are the best people really to share what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. And I know that the people that we've spoken to about their own experiences of losing someone, of the death of a loved one, has taught us that being heard matters more than anything. It's not about fixing the problem, it's about hearing the stories, sharing the stories, about acknowledging the pain and dealing with your own discomfort that you can't take that pain away because nobody can take the pain away um, around death. But you, you know, you, you help so much if you allow people to know that you're listening. Just listening without fixing, I think, is one of the key things. And sharing our different experiences and skill sets. So I discovered Dying Matters at a time in my life when my father was dying in very difficult circumstances with dementia. And I was at a complete loss about what to do and how to manage his last stage of life. And I learned through the people that I met at Dying Matters that really joining with other people was really helpful, listening to other people, learning to talk about death and dying and what was wanted from the person who was dying was absolutely central to a good end of life experience. Um, it's really hard learning to talk about death. Nobody's comfortable with it, but you can become more comfortable. And I think that being around other people who are working to expand those conversations, to open those conversations, really makes a difference. We're all learning from each other, and we should all really be working together to share our stories and help people to move forward in a way that really helps those people who are struggling with their grief or their potential loss. They know they might have a life-limiting condition, but they don't know what, what happens next. We need to talk about it and share those stories in a way that shows that it needn't be lonely. It needn't be an isolating experience. Um, I know I've gained a lot from the people that I've met through People in Partnership, um, Dying Matters, 
and Hospice UK. You know, there's so many people there who have a lot of courage to explore those difficult, difficult stages of life, who've been through it personally, and they know the reality of losing a loved one. I mean, we, 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 uh, we can't quite imagine, you know, and I know personally speaking what it's like to lose a child, but I have learned so much thanks to my son, you know, who was for 22 years in my life, but he's still in my life, despite the fact that he's dead. I share what I learn from him. Um, I carry on sharing the knowledge that I've gained since his death.